Do you appendix carry but find it a little uncomfortable when you're riding in a vehicle, especially on long road trips? Well, here's my four tips to making it a little more comfortable. What's going on, Luke with USA Carry here. If you're new to the channel, I do guns and gear reviews, defensive gun use breakdowns, and concealed carry tips like this. I've also got a bunch more content planned for you this year, so if you're into that kind of content, go ahead and subscribe, and also hit that bell to be notified when I publish new videos. So one question I get a lot about appendix carry is how do you make it comfortable when you're driving in a car, especially on long road trips. People say the gun digs into them, the holster's digging into them. So I was visiting some friends in Houston over New Year's, so I figured I'd film myself driving home, which you'll probably see here in a minute. It took about six or seven hours because we hit a bunch of traffic, but I had no issues the whole time. My gun wasn't digging into me. The holster wasn't digging into me, and that is due to these four tips I'm about to give you. So for long road trips like that, I like to carry my Glock 19. I carry this whenever I can. If I can't conceal it, then I'm carrying my Glock 43. But on long road trips, like I said, I carry this. Bigger gun, more rounds. And I was in Texas, so bigger is better, right? And yes, carrying my Glock 43 is a little less noticeable when I'm riding in a vehicle. But either one is not uncomfortable, and you can use these tips for whichever gun or holster you're carrying. I also prefer appendix carry because when I'm riding in the vehicle, my gun's not back here in my back, making it harder to access and a little more uncomfortable. I'm not doing any unneeded gun administration as far as taking my gun off and mounting it to a holster somewhere in the car. I really hope you're not using any of those gun magnets mounted in your car. I won't get into that now. I've got a video planned for that, but probably a bad idea. All right, so here we are pulling up to my new studio space. As I mentioned in probably the last couple of videos, I am super excited to get moved into here. So I'm going to get a little painting done today after I make some coffee and film this video. And while I'm at it, make sure you got some medical supplies in your car. I've got a trauma kit here from Fieldcraft Survival. It's a visor panel. It's got Velcro on both sides. I've shown it before. But since I'm in here, I've got some trauma shears. The trauma kit comes off, tourniquet, gloves, gauze, hemostatic agent. Grab it and go, or you can leave it there and access it from here. And if it's too bulky, when you put your visor down, I just rip it off, flip my visor up, put it on here, and I can still see pretty good. I want to remove it, flip it back, and put it there. All right, let's go inside. All right, so one obvious thing is you do need a good comfortable holster. I'm not gonna go into that. That's probably gonna be its own video, but these tips should work with any holster you're using. All right, tip number one is using an adjustable or ratcheting style belt. This one here that I use is the Next Belt Supreme Appendix Carry Belt. I just did a review on that, so I'll link that up here somewhere, but this allows me to get in the car and hit this button a little bit and I really can do it with one hand because the tension, once I sit down, there's tension on here and it's pushing the gun into me. So I hit the button a little bit and it loosens up, makes it a little bit more comfortable. And what that also does is when you've got your holster, I loosen it up, it pushes the holster out a little bit so that it's not so snug against your stomach. And what that does is it allows me to get a full grip on the pistol if I need to draw when I'm in a vehicle. And stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna be telling you how you could possibly win this one-of-a-kind belt that's in this bag. We'll get to that later. All right, tip number two is adding a foam wedge to your holster. This is a Henry holster. I think they call this their holster kick or something like that. So it's a bump made into the holster that pushes it back into you. But I also like to add a foam wedge 
to add a little bit more kick that pushes it back in, which helps with printing. But if you put the foam wedge far enough down here, which is where it should be, it gives you like a little cushion when you're sitting down. So it doesn't make the holster dig into your skin as much as it would without it. You can even take it off and ride it a little closer to the edge and figure out whatever works with you. That's the beauty of the Velcro. You can place it wherever you want to find that perfect spot. I'm gonna be doing a video on making a holster wedge here shortly, so keep an eye out for that. But this is a wedge I bought from ksgarmory.com because I'm lazy. And then I just bought some Velcro from Amazon. I'll link to this stuff in the description below. Tip number three is tucking your shirt behind your holster before you buckle up. So that's obviously going to keep the grip from rubbing against your skin. I usually have an undershirt on, but when I get in the vehicle, I pull my whatever cover garments on. If I'm wearing a sweatshirt and a t-shirt, I pull all of that, put it behind the grip so the grip is exposed. Obviously, I don't have to pull a cover garment to draw my gun, but that does help it from rubbing up against your skin. Now, depending on your grip, it can start to wear on a shirt. So if you're worried about that, just wear a throwaway shirt while you're on the ride and change when you get there. You just have to make sure you remember to put your cover garment back over your gun before you get out your vehicle. That could be an easy thing to forget if you've been driving for four or five hours, but if you need to, put a sticky note on your window or something like that, or make a mental note to make sure you cover back up until you get into the habit of every time you turn the keys off, unbuckle, cover garment comes back over, and then you get out. All right, tip number four isn't equipment related, but you need to plan out your route wherever you're going, what states you're gonna be traveling in to make sure they have reciprocity with the CCW permit of your state or states, because you can have multiple. We have an interactive map on usacarry.com that you can use, it's free to use and find out which states accept your permit. But you also need to look at the gun laws for each state, specifically for if businesses are allowed to put no guns allowed signs up in their place of business and whether or not they have the force of law. For example, you don't wanna stop at a gas station and go walk in and realize they don't allow guns. Do what you need to do if you find yourself in that situation, but all this does is try to minimize the amount of times you have to take your gun on and off. This last trip in Houston, I strapped my gun on before I left the house, and the only time I took it off is when I got home. That way I had the gun on me 100% of the time. I've done this trip to Houston quite a few times, visiting the same friends, and I'm usually with my wife and my four-year-old, so there's usually at least one gas station stop and a few other bathroom breaks, so I know exactly where I'm stopping every time. All right, so there are my four tips on making appendix carry a little more easier when you're in a vehicle, especially on long road trips. Now let's get to the giveaway. I partnered up with Next Belt, and they made this one of a kind. There's only one of these. I wanted to keep it for myself, but you guys are getting it. It is the Supreme Appendix Belt with an American flag etched on the front of it. Let's see if I can get it to focus on there. Like I said, there's only one of these. This is an awesome belt. I wear it every day. There's a different belt than the one I wear. You can see the webbing is a little bit different. It's a little smoother. I kind of like this. I might have to get me one. So if you want a chance to win this, all you have to do is go to the link in the description below, enter your email address, and you are registered to enter. I'm gonna be running this giveaway for 30 days, and we'll announce the winner in an email. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next one.